Okay, let's talk about installing DHCP server. Now, I already have my DHCP server up and running on this system, so I'm not going to walk you through the process of installing it, but I do want to show you all of the configuration files and how things are set up. So first thing we'll need is we will need a static IP address. Now, if you're like me, I'm sitting on a virtual machine in my YVC network, and I have an external switch so that I can get out to the internet and download the software that I need. Great. But to do that, I need to use a DHCP address. So I'll reference you back to my previous video. In fact, when you install Ubuntu server, it does DHCP for its IP address assignment by default. I'll reference you back to the previous video on configuring an IP address in order to see how we do our IP address configurations and how you can change that from static to DHCP. Now I had to set mine to DHCP to install my software and the command is apt install isc dhcp server. Now I'm not actually going to run it because I've already installed that but I wanted to show you what the command is. Now, when you do it, services will automatically start running, your daemons will automatically start running. However, when you do that with the ISC DHCP server, odds are it's probably not going to work for a variety of reasons, most notably the fact that it hasn't been configured yet. So what I had to do because of my environment is I had to switch back over to a static IP address. Now, the other thing we need to do, once we've got that to IP address, there are two things that we need to do. So I'm going to take you to the ETC DHCP folder. And here you'll see our DHCP configuration files. Now, I've got one here. You're going to have a default DHCPD file called DHCP.config. And I've renamed that one to ORIG. And I want to show that to you real quick. So I'm going to do nano DHCPTD.ORIG, which is my shorthand for original. And this gives me my original file. I always like to do backups of those files if I'm not going to modify them, even if I am going to modify them. I like to do backups so I have something that I can go back to. And frequently is this one, you'll see there's a lot of documentation in here. So everything with the hashtag is a comment and those display in that light blue cyan color. And so you see there's a lot of documentation in here that can be really kind of useful, right? So. Lots of good stuff here. So that's why we don't want to get rid of this. We want to keep these intact so we can use them a little bit later on for reference. So what I did is I did a move mvdhcpd.conf to dhcp.org. And that gives me my original backup copy. And then I edited my dhcpd.config file. And when I did that, it said there's no file here. So I had to create a new one, dhcpd.conf. And let's walk through this. So this first block here, before we get to the subnet, this is all server options. So our default lease time is in seconds. So 43,200 seconds is about a day. So if a client connects and they want a lease, our default is to lease them for an address for a day. Now, you may remember Microsoft's default is eight days. It doesn't really matter how long it is, except for this. The shorter the lease duration, the more traffic is going to be sent to your DHCP server because your DHCP clients are going to need to renew their addresses more often. The longer the lease duration, the longer those addresses are going to be in use, which means the longer it's going to be before they get released and can come back into the pool to be used again. So if you have somebody come in and they use an address for five minutes and they leave, that lease is going to stay occupied for the rest of the day. Nobody else can use it. If you have an eight day lease duration, then that address isn't going to be able to be used for another eight days. So it's going to depend on your environment how long of a lease duration you want. Now, that's the default lease time. The max lease time is if the client says, hey, I want a longer lease, this is a maximum amount of time that will lease, which is about two days. And you can set those to whatever is appropriate for your environment. In fact, in the uh, original configuration file, um, if I remember correctly, the default lease time was about 10 minutes. Okay, 
So then we set some server options and anything that has the keyword option here, that's going to be a part of the lease. So we're going to lease them the IP address, the subnet mask, and then all of the options. And this one's going to be an option for a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. We're going to give them a broadcast address. So that's something that will broad or they'll know what their broadcast address is for the network. We will give them a domain name. And then here in the subnet information, the authoritative says, yes, this is an authoritative server. The subnet defines what subnet we're going to do this on. So this is going to be for the 10.1.1.0 subnet with a net mask of 255.255.255.0. And then you'll see we've got these opening and closing curly brackets. This defines our little scope. So right here, this is our range of addresses that we're going to lease. So the first one we're going to lease is going to be 100, then 101, 100, up through 255. The router is going to be the default gateway, and the domain name servers are going to be the DNS servers that we'll use. So that's how we define our scope. <clears throat> now, if you don't get the configuration file right, when you go to restart your DHCP server, there's a chance it won't start correctly. It's not a big deal. Come back in, look at your configuration files, make sure you've got a static address, look at your config files, try to get everything set up correctly, and then try it again. Now, there's one other thing. So I'm going to control X out of here. So we have a static IP address. Check. We have our DHCP configuration subnet file. Check. We got that. The other thing that we need to do is one more file that we need to look at. It's in forward slash etc forward slash default and it's isc dash dhcp server. And this gives us the interfaces that we're going to listen on. Now, I'm listening on ETH0. That's not here by default, by the way. You have to put in the interfaces that you want your DHCP v4 and DHCP v6 to listen on. Okay, once we get all that done, we should be able to check system CTL status ISC DHCP dash server. And actually, before we check status, we're going to have to run it. So it's IS or system CTL start ISC DHCP server. And I've had this thing up too long. Shoot. That's what I was hoping to avoid. Okay, I'm going to have to break this thing in a minute. So here we see that it's active. And here I also want you to see that we have started leasing addresses, which I didn't want to do. I'm going to have to break this thing real quick, but I want to finish off this video before I do. So this is going to show us that it's up and running. And if you see DHCP Discover, DHCP Office, Offer, DHCP Request, DHCP Acknowledgement, that means we are actually leasing addresses. So I'm going to take this thing down real quick. System CTL stop ISC DHCP server. And that stops it. I'm going to go through and do my status real quick. And sure enough, it's currently inactive. Okay, good. Hopefully I didn't create too many problems for anybody there. All right. So we have, um, let me go ahead and clear my screen here. So we have our DHCP server up and running, up and running a little too well. Now, if you are, if you want this to start handing out addresses, that's great. Just let it go do its job. If you don't want it to start handing out addresses, then we need to go ahead and stop it. But just stopping it honestly isn't enough. And just stopping it, uh, if I reboot the server, it's going to come back up. So what I'm going to need to do is disable it. Now, before I do, I want to show you a couple of things with the log here. If you remember, we can look at the tail of a log. And I want to look at the var log syslog log file. And that's going to show me the last few things in my syslog, which is actually not related to this. But if I do that tail dash F, that will show me things as they come in. 
to that syslog. Now, the other thing that I want to show you, let's go over to the folder var lib dhcp. And we're going to do an LSL. And this is going to show me my lease database. So I'm going to cat dhcpd dot leases. And this is going to show me my valid leases. And thankfully, there's only one. Yes. All right. I lease the address 10.1.1.100. When it starts, when it ends, the binding state, the hardware binding. So this is a Mac address that it's going to. It's a Microsoft client. Uh, and this gives me the machine name. <clears throat> so, okay. So that's where I can go to look up my current leases. It's going to be in that file there. Now, let me go ahead and disable this. So I'm going to do systemctl. Disable ISC dash DHCP server. And there is also a server six, which is the uh, DHCP six. Now I want to verify that that worked. So it's system CTL status ISC dash DHCP server. And what I'm looking for right here is as you take a look at this line it starts out loaded you go across and you see where it says disabled that means that this is now disabled which means it's not going to uh hand out it's not going to automatically restart when my system reboots now if you are like me and you're doing this as a learning experiment demo experiment then you're going to want to make sure that you disable that so you don't hand out addresses when you don't mean to. So make sure that you do that on your if you're doing this on your home network. Now, if it's an isolated environment where you do want this to be your DHCP server, then just don't disable it. Leave it running and you should have a fully functional DHCP server.